This example will be about the GSM network that we are going to plan northeast of Beijing to perform some coverage calculations in it, frequency assignment, and we will go on to, to perform traffic design in an example in, in Sweden. First, I will make uh, a quick demonstration on how to create a new base station. I right click in the map, select a template uh, that has all the parameters of the base station predefined. These parameters can all be changed by, by the user. Uh, but now we are not going to change anything, just use the predefined uh, template. So uh, the base A has been created. It appears in the list of base stations in the project. And the stations in the project have detailed uh, characteristics. There are three. Uh, cells in this base station. Uh, one cell is beaming north. They all operate on a nominal frequency in the 900 megahertz uh, band. We will continue later to optimize the frequency assignment. So this initial frequency has really no relevance right now. Uh, the equipment characteristics are fully defined uh, by items in the database. This is a GSM base transmitter with all its proper parameters. The antennas uh, that are in use here are uh, sector antennas, 120 degree uh, in the horizontal plane and uh, very narrow in the vertical plane to, uh, to have a good gain. This equipment is not yours to edit, is the comment I get, because I'm logged in as guest to this session. And this equipment item is owned by another user. I can make use of it for the calculations, make copies of it, but I cannot change the data of the original um, antenna. Let's perform a first calculation, uh, a coverage calculation for the three sectors, of, uh, the three cells of this base. We do it as single station calculations. So each cell will be represented by its own uh, coverage. Select the mobile, uh, and this is a, a handheld a GSM handset that we will make use of. Calculate uplink because it is the uplink that is the limiting, gives the limit of range. Uh, I wouldn't expect more than maximum something 15 kilometer of range so we can reduce, uh, reduce uh, the uh, uh, radius, maximum radius to calculate on. Pressing OK starts the calculation, and there will be three sequential calculations. There we are, it is ready. And having a look uh, on the result, the individual results for each cell. The first tab uh, shows some statistics in general of the maximum and minimum received signal level in the base. Uh, the default levels for presentations, uh, minus 110 dBm is the sensitivity of that we have defined for the base. And uh, minus 98 is, is a, a good planning margin, uh, 12 dB above base sensitivity. So that is the coverage of the sector beaming uh, 240 degrees. The one beaming 120 degrees. 
is like that and beaming north is like that and it can be seen clearly that uh, the mountains uh, obstruct the coverage uh, a lot towards uh, the northeast <coughs> Um, it's a quick uh, operation to, to uh, multiply this base uh, and perform an immediate or almost immediate coverage presentations um, for the copies of the base. To do that, I make use of the copy and immediate coverage function. And now when I place the cursor at the location, in the map. First a copy of the base is created, then uh, the calculations are performed and are immediately displayed. Repeating this a few times, uh, well now we are at a total of uh, nine cells in three bases. and 12 cells in four bases. Uh, the, uh, the map tends to get quite busy when uh, presenting so many individual coverage results. These can be merged into a single composite, like I did now, and we can remove the individual display the composite. So for, for a, a good planning situation, outdoor coverage with a, a decent uh, planning margin, the green area would provide uh, uh, coverage, a nominal signal level better than minus 98 dBm received in the base. Now, this was a, a completely manual uh, operator defined placement of the base stations. Uh, now we will change to make a larger network and use the, uh, the function for automatic optimization of the network. And I'm just clearing the project now for for the results and things that we will not use any longer and take away the, these manually created uh, base stations. For the automatic planning, we make use of a cost and coverage optimizer tool. It is very efficient in achieving uh, uh, best coverage at lowest cost. It has uh, lots of settings and uh, we usually uh, use it in the way that we save settings files once the settings have been done and we, we are happy and successful with those settings. They can be saved and retrieved for later use. So what we are going to do now is Within uh, the area that is now shown in the map, uh, we have defined that that is our desired coverage area. Um, the type of coverage to achieve is uh, a handheld uh, mobile telephone, the same type that, that we used previously. Um, the type of base station that we are going to use <coughs> is a GSM base. It, uh, for the effect of, uh, of this optimization, it has the same properties as the one we used for the coverage calculation. So it has a very narrow, very narrow vertical uh, antenna beam and uh, an omnidirectional uh, horizontal plane antenna beam, which in effect is what you get uh, with the three sector 120 degree base that we used before. 
uh, the placement area is the same um, as the desired coverage area. It can be different. With one uh, change, we have defined here to have forbidden terrain. The base stations are not to be built in water, so there will be no placement of base stations in in the lakes here. Um, in this case, we will use uh, a green field planning, so because there are no uh, for the exercise, there are no existing base stations, so we have only defined costs nominal costs for uh, greenfield uh, operations and it is the antenna is actually the only cost that we have uh, put in here uh, the antenna tower costs a nominal sum of one to uh, to build this can be very detailed very accurate if the real purpose of, of the optimization is to, uh, to achieve a budget figure, for instance, uh, or uh, the maximum coverage that you can achieve for, for a certain budget. The optimizer can also make use of existing stations. That's the case uh, normally when there already are a few base stations that uh, are can candidates to reuse. Uh, the operation of those stations are usually much uh, <clears throat> lower cost than building new, new uh, sites, new stations. The third type is existing sites. With existing sites, we can search uh, to, uh, we can search the databases that are connected to RAP to find candidate sites where there already are antenna towers and we can select which ones of those that we uh, would be allowed to use for the new network. Such uh, existing sites are also normally much lower cost than building a completely new site. <clears throat> but again, in this demonstration, we use uh, complete greenfield planning. So no existing stations, no existing sites. <laughs> and to make uh, the demonstration a, a, a slightly quicker, uh, we are also using a fixed antenna height of 40 meter above ground. This can be um, in intervals and uh, uh, different costs can be assigned to different antenna heights. The optimization will take longer and uh, uh, it is not such a good demonstration to do real time. But it is uh, no, no extensive uh, uh, time for it anyway. So we define 40 meter antenna height here as a fixed antenna height. Now to the evaluation. Uh, here uh, we can select the propagation model and the one we are using now is a, a, a very good model for uh, terrain dependent propagation. So it accounts for, uh, for the mountains uh, uh, with diffraction, it, it accounts for ground reflection and, uh, and uh, attenuation due to buildings and uh, forests. The uplink will be limiting because it is it is a handheld we are looking at. Um, maximum server range, we set that to a nominal 15 kilometer. Um, uh, we wouldn't expect longer than, than that with a handheld, but, uh, and the reason for it is that uh, the optimization is quicker if, uh, if we limit this uh, to, to the anticipated maximum range. We plan for a received power of 12 dB above receiver sensitivity, above the base station receiver sensitivity in this case, and that is for the planning margin. And a 
uh, attempt to achieve or optimize to achieve a minimum coverage of 95% of the area uh, that is now shown in the map. If we have a fixed budget, uh, we could enter that value here and uh, the solution would instead be uh, the maximum coverage that we will achieve for that budget. In this case, we, we are not using any, any population data or traffic design uh, uh, data, but uh, that can be done if, if we have a population database uh, or have defined <coughs> with the, the, the uh, clutter codes or land cover codes, have defined the subscriber density per square kilometer for, for each uh, uh, clutter code. We have not done that in this case. Pressing OK uh, starts the calculation. So here is a progress meter. Uh, now it's 25%. It uh, goes up fairly quickly. What it is doing now is uh, placing candidate base stations at uh, good locations uh, that are, are selected uh, uh, at high locations. Um, and it performs many, many uh, coverage calculations. It does, uh, in between each movement of this circle, it does 10 calculations. So there will be hundreds of, of coverage calculations that are used for the analysis of achieving the best coverage. It is ready now. The result appears here. And <clears throat> it required uh, 22 uh, base stations to achieve 95.2% coverage of uh, the desired area. Now we will generate the stations by pressing this button. Uh, here uh, we can select to change the configuration of the base. And in this case, I want to do it as, as three sector base uh, stations. So I select a new template. It has exactly the same uh, uh, radiated power, the same sensitivity uh, and everything. The only thing is that it is sectorized instead of uh, omnidirectional. The combined coverage of the three antennas is omnidirectional. This one is suitable for this purpose. So that's, and we call it something, base, and it will be numbered automatically. Okay, um, this list shows the individual cells and this list shows the basis. So let's show the basis in the map. Uh, these are the locations of the 22 bases. And we can see that uh, uh, there is no base station placed in the lake because we, we did not allow that. Uh, all of these bases are identical uh, since, since they are created from the same source, uh, the base station template. To continue uh, with another important operation for the GSM network is to perform frequency assignment of the uh, 3 by 22 total uh, 66 uh, cells. So I mark all the cells, start the frequency assignment tool, and I select allotment. That is the channel plan. 
in this case we we do all the, these uh, optimizations for a 900 megahertz uh, uh, network so i select uh, this one it is a 5 megahertz wide 2 by 5 megahertz so it's uh, it's uh, uh, 40 is it 40 <laughs> 200 kilohertz uh, spacings uh, and that gives 25 frequencies frequency pairs in uh, in the channel plan then we select settings uh, for the calculation. Uh, the, use the same propagation model as before. Use the same mobile. Use the same planning level margin. Uh, set a maximum server range and uh, can use 15 kilometer because that was what we what we set in in the optimization also all these uh, settings can be uh, predefined uh, for a quick start in uh, any planning situation just by selecting the uh, the appropriate uh, uh, settings conditions as, as they are stored in in settings files and the next time I would start the the tool, it would also it, it remembers the settings. Pressing calculate now starts the calculation of, of all uh, propagation losses in this network between uh, the worst position interference locations of the mobiles mobile to mobile interference uh, base to base interference is not uh, a case in, in a duplex network like this but uh, it is mobile to base base to mobile uh, and so on so there are a lot of calculations going on it is ready then clicking here we can have a look at uh, at the interference conditions in the graphical form um, now all cells operate on the same frequency and that will of course uh, create a lot of interference and that can be seen in the margin diagram below all values that are above zero indicate interference values below zero indicate uh, non-interfered uh, conditions frequencies that are indicated in blue like this one uh, uh, are in use by the station that we are marked and in this case uh, the interference is uh, minus 12 dB uh, as this uh, uh, base is the or cell is being interfered with it gives interference to someone some other cell at a maximum of uh, minus 10.7 signal to interference ratio signal to interference ratio is equal to carrier to interference ratio in this uh, software okay let's optimize the assignment by deleting all frequencies run the assignment uh, like this now we assign one frequency to each cell the um, it is possible to assign uh, multiple frequencies uh, in one run uh, it that will take um, uh, a little longer so if i had assigned two frequencies in in one run it would take uh, twice this time that we are now uh, showing the uh, what it's doing now is making use of of the matrix of the propagation losses and uh, sorting and selecting frequencies in a in a near optimum way to achieve a very good frequency 
optimized uh, uh, network. <coughs> This is the situation now for cell one. It is using uh, 935.4 <coughs> megahertz uh, for transmit. That frequency is shown in, in blue here, and now it is below zero, indicating good quality. And the interference value is 12.3 dB, Re the requirement that is has been defined for the base station is 9 dB. So it is a good uh, condition there. And we can go through a few of the, of the others and it, it works nicely. We can also see that there is room to, to assign uh, more frequencies to, to this uh, network uh, within the five megahertz uh, uh, 25 uh, channels. Closing the assignment tool uh, prompts this question. Would you like to save your assignment? Yes, I want to save it. And now it is saved to the cells. So now they no longer have that 935 megahertz uh, now they have all uh, different well not not all of them have different frequencies there is quite a lot of frequency reuse in this network but it has been optimized the frequency reuse can be uh, studied in a way by using the spectrum viewer function it can be set to count stations per assigned frequency. And here we can see at most we use 14 stations on, on a single frequency that is on 935 uh, megahertz. And these cells at these base stations use that frequency. Okay, <clears throat> when I press save uh, on this, uh, uh, for this file, for this project, everything is saved as the file gsmbeijing.wpr wrap project and I can close it and restore it uh, and continue working with it or I can send it to a colleague that can continue to work work with this. Now we are going to make an example of uh, uh, traffic design. Uh, to do that I open a prepared project for that purpose. It is in uh, Sweden. This is the base stations.wpr project is one of our training projects. I closed the GSM Beijing project and now we are in, in Sweden showing a map around uh, Lean Shipping where RAP International has its headquarters. Um, the content of this project is 16 GSM base stations. Uh, this is uh, not not a this is just a nominal network. It has not been well planned for for good quality or, or anything like that. It is for for the exercise of traffic capacity uh, that we have in our very extensive uh, user's manual of this software. So um, the normal procedure uh, for this is that you have a network uh, with cells in it and you apply 
a, a traffic map on it and then calculate the performance that you will get from from that traffic load uh, that the traffic map defines then it it is a quick operation to to see what needs to be done uh, more frequencies more channels uh, to uh, certain base stations more cells and, and uh, in the iteration you achieve a, a good good uh, quality good capacity first i open an existing uh, traffic map that uh, works together with this project it uh, looks like this now i will take take some time to uh, change the map display because uh, when when we have a very detailed map it is not so clear uh, with a display of of uh, the traffic objects um, the traffic map is is designed in a way to uh, uh, identify certain high density high traffic areas uh, we operate we use circles polygons lines uh, there is no line here but uh, a line could for instance be a, a, a road or a complete road network and points points are the small circles I, when i press a, an object here it gets highlighted so now we are there in this village we have defined uh, 300 subscribers type a 10 type b 5 type c these are the uh, later uh, assigned uh, different uh, traffic properties uh, different traffic generation intensities and uh, and uh, durations of calls and so on so we will make use of this map we will not uh, change it in any way that that is the one we are going to use now we define a calculation area and that is to include the complete um, area uh, of coverage for these base stations mark the base stations select the traffic capacity tool and select the mobile to use and let's do it with the not handheld in this case this is a, a vehicle a car mounted gsi mobile uh, that uh, works together with this example we select the traffic map here it is possible to use terrain code values we have no definitions of uh, subscriber density for the terrain codes in this uh, setup so i unclick that faster calculation with a maximum server range yeah that's uh, that's uh, reasonable to to use otherwise uh, the calculation uh, takes a little longer because the software attempts to to it anticipates a potential of uh, having very very long uh, server ranges which of course may not be reasonable and let's have a slightly higher resolution there i call it traffic just traffic the name of the result that we will store later pressing ok starts the calculation <clears throat> and uh, 
what it's doing now is uh, calculating all the best server areas for each uh, base and it automatically presents the, uh, the best server areas uh, in the map and as can be seen here this is, this is just a nominal network it has not been really designed to give good coverage because there are base, base station 09 here for instance has very small coverage but it works very nicely for for the example and for the training uh, that we use the, this project for traffic capacity results contains now the result of that double clicking on it opens the edit result uh, information and uh, we can sort on the columns here to to see which base stations are most heavily loaded um, and base station 10 is most heavily loaded it has to cater for 436 subscribers of the a type and the, the total number is in the rightmost column 457 um, subscribers then continuing here setting uh, 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 traffic properties uh, on the subscriber types is done here uh, we make use of two traffic formulas airline b and airline c airline b is the one that is relevant for for gsm airline c is relevant for tetra for instance and it has some more parameters and it gives more output parameters but we'll use airline b and we will use these values so grade of service 0 0.02 that is two percent a grade of service uh, or which is equivalent to two percent blocking uh, uh, a subscriber calling uh, from his handphone uh, or his his car phone uh, will then experience uh, blocking of the network for less than two percent of the time continuing here uh, to see what grade of service did we achieve and uh, as expected base station 10 is the worst <coughs> uh, 0 0.47 uh, so this is for in percent uh, 47 or 48 percent uh, blocking of course that is not good so we need really need to do something about actually about all those that have uh, blocking uh, that is worse than the two percent so that's that's uh, uh, this one is okay base station 04 and below are okay uh well this one is not okay <laughs> for subscriber b it is blocked blocked for for the the other subscriber types okay continuing uh here this is what we the servable number of subscribers at the two percent grade of service and the current number of channels uh, what number of channels uh, are required uh, really uh 20 and this is what has been assigned to these base stations they they are assigned to have 20 traffic channels so they are assumed to have have um, actually uh, three frequencies each each gsm frequency can carry a maximum of eight traffic channels uh, but uh, there are a few signaling channels needed also so so that takes away a little um, traffic servable traffic in airline at current number of channels and required grade of service that's also of the interest here is really the design um, the channels design recommendation 
Uh, remember now they had they have um, uh, twenty. They re this requires forty six. So base station twelve, base station O three, eleven, and ten require more more uh, frequencies. Uh, twice as many. So 46 channels uh, uh, requires 6 GSM for GSM, 6 frequencies So uh, on the base. And the presentation, uh, the, uh, the default presentation is best server, but there are other presentations that can be done, grade of service and so on. Okay, so that's an example of a, a traffic analysis and traffic design uh, for a G GSM network. Uh, the, the basic airline formulas are, are available um, as handy calculators. Uh, so if it's just a, a mere matter of it, of uh, calculating what number of channels that would be required for for a certain traffic load uh, without considering its geographical distribution and this calculator can be used okay um, i'll take the opportunity now to to show another function that relates to the to the uh, mobile telephone situation uh, often base stations are linked with microwave and uh, to make an example of that let's let's assume that base station 12 is supposed to be linked to, to base station 13 uh, and for some purpose so I make use of a function to set as tx here which means that the coordinates geographical coordinates of base station 12 are now defined for the new link and base station 13 that's where we are going to create the link and then i use the new station function this works with the templates and now i will use uh, let's uh, do this a microwave a 22 gigahertz microwave link of some kind i call this link a everything is predefined then just as uh, when we calculate when we create a gsm base or any other type of host station it operates on this uh, frequency now we are at the other end of the link link b pressing ok sets the link between those two points i take away a few things that are not needed now the area there uh, the colors represent of the link uh, green color indicates that that is that the transmitter at that end of the link is transmitting on the high frequency of the, the duplex pair Double clicking on this opens uh, the terrain profile viewer. And uh, as can be seen here, this link will not work. Uh, much too uh, much obstructions. Let's uh, check the, uh, the performance of it anyway. And then we will improve the performance by, by uh, raising the antennas so i use the radio link performance tool and it has a flat fading margin of minus 18.9 db so this does not work at all let's increase the antennas uh, somewhat uh, raise the antennas let's put this at 40 meter and the other end of the link also at 40 meter
still not very good because we have some obstructions in in the first Fresnel zone and uh, that is not so good at 22 gigahertz but uh, let's try it anyway and it has improved a lot so 28 db uh, fading margin and uh, the related uh, values for probabilities of degraded minutes and severely errored seconds uh, are are okay so this this link uh, should work uh, uh, quite well. Okay. Um, the last uh, the last item to to show a, a function uh, for this uh, session is is the co-location interference. Uh, tool. To uh, to do that, I will uh, make use of of some uh, data that we have in this installation. I will remove everything. I'll delete uh, all these because I, I'm not going to use them any longer. And we will zoom in on on the city here. and i'll zoom in a, uh, a little more because i uh, i have set this to to display uh, a map a detailed map of this uh, city and it comes in automatically at scales of one to twenty thousand and uh, and larger uh, this location is a popular antenna installation there are many installations on that tower so i will search around that in one of the databases that we have here and it includes a lot we do not calculate on stations that are, that are stored in the project we transfer them to the workspace which is the project file so now we have a lot of stations in order to see how many i need to expand that and there are 55 stations in total let's make use of of this geographical coordinate because I'm creating a new set as TX and we are creating a new uh, station there. So create a new station and uh, let's take some, what do we have? A WCDMA perhaps, uh, I have somewhere down there, yeah, a WCDMA. A 3G base station. So I call this just 3G. And uh, it operates on, on this uh, frequency. It has technical characteristics reasonable for a, a 3G base station, but it does not have any duplex filters and so on. Um, and of course, it, in reality, it has, but for the exercise here it's good that it doesn't have because we will check now what this station does what kind of interference it gives to all the others in in this antenna tower and the reverse what interference does this base get from all the existing stations for that we use the co-location interference tool it starts with listing all the involved frequencies quite a few of them i calculate uh, the interference and you can see here 
uh, first they chose the receivers being interfered and the total column indicates the total cases of interference that uh, the, the new base experiences. So it has 13 cases of interference. Let's have a look at them. And uh, there are quite a few uh, of them here, uh, quite far away in, in frequency. And uh, the reason for that is that, that the new base does not have any filtering in any uh, uh, RF site engineering uh, that has not been done. <laughs> no RF site engineering has been done. And in some cases, we are right on top of the antennas of some other stations, distance zero meters. So let's just first change the antenna height a little. We'll change to 49 meters to get most probably a void on top interference and then recalculate. We are now down to six cases. So we most probably succeeded in avoiding those that we had the antenna exactly at the same location. We still have a few here. And then it's reasonable to assume that our receiver is being interfered with, and we should really put a good filter on, on the transmitter. The transmitter spectrum looks like this. That is the standard uh, WCDMA without any duplex filtering or anything. So it is just 60 dB suppressed. Let's put a filter on it. And uh, we can actually use, I make use of this bandpass filter. It says 900 megahertz. That doesn't matter. It, for the calculation, it tunes automatically to the center frequency of the transmitter. And this is automatically also placed on the receiver. Then it says station data changed, recalculate. So I calculate again and it is ready. There is no case of interference. This means that we have cleaned up the situation with our new base station. It is not getting interference from, from the others. And let's just check that result interfering transmitters if our transmitter gives interference. No, the table is empty. So we managed to clean up the interference situation by proper RF site engineering, putting a good filter on our new base station. And we also moved the, the antenna one meter to avoid putting it on, on top of, of existing antennas. Okay, that uh, that completes uh, the quick demonstration of uh, of uh, some uh, features of RAP for cellular planning.